Hi, I'm Steve Greenberg, political cartoonist, and this is The Greatest Day Interviews. I think in cartoons, I read the paper, and I formulate cartoons even if I don't have a deadline. Uh, I put things into visual terms in my own head. So it's kind of become what I do, just the same way that a poet will write poetry, or a songwriter will just be continually thinking of songs, you know, when she's having her coffee in the morning or whatever. Um, it's just kind of what I do. Well, the very first editorial cartoon I did was in high school. I was your typical, completely apathetic high school student, paid no attention to current events, and I was in a social studies class, and a teacher gave us an assignment, try drawing a political cartoon of something in the news. And uh, this will show my age, but this was in the Nixon era, and um, Nixon had gone to China, a uh, breakthrough political event. And um, I was an art, I always drew, I was always into cartooning, always into art, and I was an art student in high school. So I thought, well, I can do this, I'm an artist. And I did a cartoon, and um, it was actually, um, it was actually a pretty good cartoon. Student, the teacher praised it, and that was the first time I ever even had the notion of political cartooning. And then um, some of the high school textbooks had political cartoons in, say, World War II, for example, uh, cartoons. And uh, you know, I started seeing those things and got inspired. And um, growing up in LA, I read the LA Times with Paul Conrad. He was uh, inspiration as I read his work um, over the years. This is an LAPD shooting cartoon. I have the right to remain silent as the cop uh, reads his own Miranda rights. Uh -huh. oh, Conrad, um, he was very inspirational as I started getting more uh, aware of political events, current events. Uh, you know, I turned 18, I had a vote. Um, I wanted to be a good citizen and you know, be aware of what was going on. So I read the newspapers more. I read the editorial pages of the newspapers. And of course, I read the cartoons. And I started getting um, going to the library and seeing newspapers from other cities and seeing all the cartooning going on. And so my cartooning that had been more sort of comic strip or comic book oriented, suddenly I got more interested in the political stuff. I started drawing cartoons at El Camino College in sketchbooks for art classes. They weren't published in the school newspaper, they were just for sketchbooks. But when I transferred to Cal State Long Beach, I decided to start getting cartoons in the campus newspaper. So I placed a cartoon, and then the next time they had an opinion page, uh, I had another cartoon in there. And I did that the next time and the next time. I wound up doing that every single issue that had an opinion page for about four years in college. And um, after a while, I won a few uh, college awards, and then I started thinking, well, you know, maybe I'd like to do this as a career. I collected some artwork of uh, other uh, notable cartoonists. I got these auctions and things like that from cartooning gatherings. original Snoopy by Charles Schultz, who I knew, and uh, he rarely did sketches like that, but I did a sketch of him and he gave me one in return. Just a little bit of a brag while I have uh, awards I've done up here, uh, awards I've won. Yeah, most of us who, who've won anything, you know, put them up uh, in whatever our office space is. But this is the first time I was ever an artist and writer for Mad Magazine which I grew up with. I loved Mad Magazine. I was introduced to it by my older sister, and I was looking at the cartoons before I even could get the humor, when I was just, you know, I was a little kid looking at the cartoons there, and uh, much of the political stuff, or, you know, the social commentary stuff was way over my head at, you know, age seven or whatever it was, but, uh, but I grew up with Mad, loved it, and, um, oh, about, 25 years or so ago, 
I actually got into Matt a few times as an artist and writer, so that's my first one. Quick sketch pen, pen and paper, pencil and paper, uh, very traditional. I use this light box, um, so I'll put my quick sketch on this and I'll trace through again with pen and ink onto final paper. And um, I've got a uh, flat bed scanner here. I scan in the work and then I um, have my computer. I have a Wacom tablet that I use. Um, as my input device and I, um, I'll use Photoshop to clean up the artwork and, um, and get it ready for print. So by the, time, by the time I start, it's pen and ink, very traditional. By the time I send it to the publication, it's a digital file that's been colorized and uh, cleaned up and sent electronically. Um, I thought you might want to see, I've got um, Here's a recent cartoon I did, and let me call up Photoshop here. I've got this sort of, um, this is the cartoon. This is actually the most recent cartoon I did about abortion. I'll show you the process. <clears throat> I was sitting at my dining room table reading the news about, I can't even remember which state of the Union, uh, Georgia perhaps, that did the latest miserable restriction on women having abortions. And I was thinking, you know, it just it's like an obstacle course. And of course, as a cartoonist, I try to pick up on any literal things like that and make it, you know, what can I do visually? So I did a quick rough on just scrap paper of an obstacle course. And um, so I thought, okay, I'm going to do this as my next cartoon. <laughs> So because this is a complicated course, and I have to fit it into a particular rectangle or a particular um, size and shape, I needed to kind of lay it out. So I use Adobe Illustrator, and I drew the grid of the cartoon and kind of roughed out where the elements would be. And the biggest challenge was getting the word abortion, with the letters O being hoops, in the far corner and I knew it had to sort of um, have um, my elephant, the GOP elephant, and Trump holding them in the right positions. So this is a quick layout. And then here's my, my penciling with ballpoint uh, pen um, to sort of really get it down to where it needed to be. Wow. So when I used my light box to trace and make, I decided I would do this in pieces because I'd have to slide things around a little bit. So I did the woman, the optical course. I knew that the trampoline might have to move around, so I did that, not touching anything else. And I did the elephant and Trump, um, not touching anything else, so I could move them around. Um, sometimes I will flip the things. I'll draw a mirror image because I have a little bit of astigmatism and I know that things kind of skew a little bit to the left or right. And so by flipping it and tracing it backwards, uh, I correct any any distortion. Um, it, it's kind of a new thing. I only have only been doing that for about a couple of years. because I discovered that was a good trick uh, to save myself uh, some cleanup in Photoshop. Um, so anyhow, I uh, scan this in. Let me go back here. So this is the line work when I got everything in position. So I moved the trampolines, I moved Trump, I moved the elephant. Uh, again, the biggest trick was getting Trump and the elephant to hold the hoops in the right position. And so um, I finally placed everything the way I wanted and I had the finished line work and then um, colorized in Photoshop. Do you get commissioned or do you always submit or how does that work? I always submit um,
basically I come up with my ideas I come up with pretty much anything I want to come up with and I send it in there are editors of the publications who can choose not to use them um, for the Ventura paper um, usually I just send them whatever I do including local stuff but sometimes I'll ask the editor do you have any local topics that you want to suggest or do you have any local topics you're going to be doing editorials about for the coming issue and I might get suggestions and I might run sketches by the editor saying, you know, what do you think of this cartoon? If, particularly if it's a political figure, I want to get the reaction. So um, nearly everything goes through un unchanged. Several years ago, I was cartooning for the blog LA Observed, which uh, is pretty well read in journalism circles. And so I was doing LA local cartoons. So here's one on USC and the Coliseum. Uh, this is a recent one uh, this year with Gavin Newsom's uh, inauguration. What do you call the shooting deaths of 50 people? In New Zealand, it's the worst massacre in the nation's history. In the U.S., it's a quieter than usual Friday <laughs> because um, I think the average per day with something like 90 shootings uh, in the last couple years. And so 50 would actually be pretty slow for a typical day in the United States. <laughs> Regional, this was for the Ventura County Reporter about the Thomas fire two years ago. So I was trying to just come up with a graphic that was just the fierceness and the impact. How so. long does it take you to like like go from beginning to finished product? Uh, it varies, but I'd say probably typically about four hours. Okay. Um, I've done them as quickly as an hour or so if they're very simple. I've had them go as long as six or eight hours if they're really complicated, but four hours probably typical. Uh, see another one. This is um, the uh, cause of the Thomas fire. So I've done a graphic with uh, the Southern California Edison logo being uh, sort of uh, maligned here to show that this is sparking the fire. This one's a little small, but uh, this is for LA Observe. The uh, water main breaks that kept happening in LA. Um, so I did a, uh, a photo illustration from, uh, of course, Singing in the Rain. So it's I'm singing in the main as the uh, DWP uh, water main breaks with a crack in the pavement. This is possibly my most popular cartoon from when I was cartooning for LA Observed. This is actually a local cartoon. I don't know if anybody except me has drawn uh, Eric Garcetti. Um, Again, there's nobody really doing LA cartoons. This one was for the Argonaut covering uh, Venice, the Marina, the Santa Monica, the West Side. So, uh, so it gave me an excuse to do something about uh, Garcetti. This, in this case, it was about the plan to put a homeless shelter in Venice. And of course, nobody wants a homeless shelter in their backyard. Right. So it's one of those NIMBY things that everybody says, well, we need this, but nobody wants it next to them. So this gave me an opportunity to put Garcetti in a cartoon. I've drawn him a few times. Um, again, since there's almost nobody doing anything for LA, I, I may be the LA cartoonist nowadays. Um, so in, case, in some cases I do find local places where I can do you know, LA specific cartoons. This is sort of an LA West Side one. Scooters everywhere. Oh. <laughs> so, the hottest new West Side aerobic routine, the bird line shuffle step. <laughs> People have lots of feelings about this. Another one on the scooters, this one was localized to Santa Monica. So, this is the bird scooters <laughs> with the, uh, <laughs> the poop about safety concerns. This is when they're 
actually first really coming into Santa Monica, and I worked with the editor of the uh, Argonaut who suggested the topic. So, you know, what's good local topic? He said, bird scooters. So, um, so I did the first thing that came to mind, which is, uh, this is what came to mind. <laughs> <laughs> Taking the bird again, literally, and turning it into something uh, visual. California high-speed rail encountering Trump. I don't like the looks of that tunnel. It's a great cartoon. Oh, and then little, sometimes I'll just throw in little Easter eggs. So this is railroad double crossing. Uh, here's one more uh, high-speed rail cartoon that I put up here that uh, I like. This is a uh, Far Future with Jerry Brown. <laughs> After decades and billions of dollars, I hereby declare this section of the state high-speed rail project open. <laughs> and in the meanwhile, in the background is uh, Elon Musk's uh, Hyperloop uh, zipping around. Oh boy. This was a lot of fun. Drawing and writing and thinking about it? All the, yeah, yeah. Um, sometimes the writing is the most fun and, and the art is just a task I have to do to get the cartoon up there. And sometimes it's just really fun to do the, the artwork. So, um, you know, this was fun trying to, you know, come up with the uh, sort of comic book uh, inspired, you know, shooting uh, Hyperloop cars and the futuristic uh, loops of things. And, um, you know, and Jerry Brown, you know, aged another 20 years or whatever. <laughs> Cartoons that get the most response over all your years of doing cartoons? Um, probably anything related to gun control. Uh, that one, it's such a hot button issue. There's almost always some reaction and abortion. Those are probably things that get the most response. Um, pro and con, because people have very strong feelings on either side of those topics. So um, I get. I get a lot of reprint requests for the abortion cartoons because there aren't that many people who who advocate for pro-choice positions. Uh, there are a lot of cartoons out there that um, from the other side that uh, you know talk about aborted fetuses and sanctity of life and so on. And I've done a m many cartoons over decades supporting pro-choice, so um, those get a response and they get requests for reprints. Or reposting on blogs, uh, you know, to show, hey, there's actually a viewpoint that you know actually says, yes, it is appropriate to have a pro-choice position. Sure, of course, everybody's styles change. My early stuff was so horrible. Um, <laughs> these uh, cartoon books. Um, there's this collection called Best Editorial Cartoons of the Year which they're not really best, they never were the best. They're mo mostly just collections of editorial cartoons. And the ones earlier on my career, the artwork is pretty crude. Um, <laughs> the lines were thin, the characters were not good, the proportions were not great. Um, I'm really embarrassed by them. And unfortunately, you know, books, you know, they're in there forever. Uh, if you go to a library, you might find my early work. Um, but I've definitely improved and, and um, gotten better and better. I think my drawing is better than ever. Really, I think my cartoons are better than ever. About um, eight years ago, I think it was, I fell into doing comic strip just by chance almost. Um, a sister paper of the Ventura County Reporter, the alternative weekly that I draw for, um, they had a sister paper called Life After 50. That was a publication for people 50 and up. And my ex-wife got into a Facebook conversation. A, a mutual friend was conversing with this fellow who started this post, and it was just a very silly post. Uh, 
making bad puns about song lyrics uh, from uh, Stairway to Heaven. And anyhow, my ex-wife got into this thread and she and this, this guy who started the thread kept going back and forth. And at the end of the thread, she asked, you know, who are you? And he turned out to be an editor of this publication. <laughs> and she said, well, you and Steve need to talk. You know, you're in the same, same company. So uh, he said, well, okay, what can you do? And I suggested illustrations. He said, no, I want to do something different. And anyhow, we came up with the idea of doing a comic strip. So I came up with this comic strip. It's called Boomerish. Sort of like the way people fudge their age, like, oh, I'm 50-ish, I'm 30-ish, uh, so boomer-ish. And um, here's uh, three examples here. So it's it's a comic strip for people 50 and up, um, kind of boomer generation specific. But um, over the years, I've seen people try to do senior citizen cartoons, and they're absolutely terrible. So... I decided this was not going to be a an old fart cartoon. This was going to be snarky and and uh, relevant and fun and um, just a lot of fun. So, for example, uh, here's this bottom one here. Um, student uh, to the main character's teacher. I just ran here from music class. Can I leave my guitar here, Mr. Groover? Sure. But first, let me give this a whirl. He starts playing Hotel California. Welcome to the Hotel California. And he's doing his guitar licks. Bah, 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 bah. And the next panel, the student goes, wow. And then, my grandpa used to sing that song. <laughs> and and uh, Mr. Gruber is just crushed. So there's a lot of fun, silly things here. The boomer trying to deal with social media. Email. Facebook and email. LinkedIn, Facebook, email. Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, email. Then StumbleUpon, Tumblr, Instagram, Pinterest, on and on and on, dig. And he's sinking down, overwhelmed. And the final panel, just back to email. <laughs>